Hello people, I am Inko, and today I'll be looking at a game that was loved by very few, hated by many, and had the power to turn many a game reviewer into blubbering men. I am of course talking about Knight's Contract, developed by Game Republic, which also made Folklore, a game I'm quite familiar with. And similarly to Folklore, it features a dual protagonist and has ties to all the European myths, this time being Germany and their witch hunting. But unlike Folklore, Knight's Contract seems to be an outlet for the director's own fetishes, as they're all quite neatly packed into the game. It would also be the last game Game Republic would ever make before suddenly shutting down and the director fleeing the country to hide from debt collectors. Knight's Contract is also a game I had suppressed from my memory, as when I found it, I suddenly remembered that I indeed had played it before when my friend showed off his PS3. That being said, I could not recall shit about the game, except how attracted I was to the exposed midriff of the main character, and it awakened something in me. It got me bricked up, as they say. From that day forward, I knew I could no longer remain a good Catholic boy. But despite my blasphemy, God was benevolent, and this was the only fetish I walked out with. It's quite a strange feeling, suddenly finding the source of where a fetish came from. Anyway, story. You play as Heinrich, a Sigma gym bro who was proficient in bone mashing and joking, but one day he gets banished from his gym and shunned by all his fellow jokers. The reason? They claim it's impossible to have natty gains when you're immortal. A hundred years later, he meets Gretchen, which he executed a long time ago. Gretchen gives him a proposal. Help me hunt down and kill my remaining sisters, and in return, I'll turn off your immortality and let you die. This sounds like the perfect bargain, so Heimer goes with it, very giddy over the prospect of finally dying. All things considered, the healthiest relationship ever depicted in a game. That's not a joke. Heinrich and Gretchen seem to have a mutual respect for each other, and rather than trying to always devalue the other person's skills, they try to help each other by strengthening the other's weakness. Example, Gretchen's feet are now tired and in pain because she has been walking all day and she is weak. In subtle contrast, Heinrich is a big man with a bigger ass and will help Gretchen by offering to carry her the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Is it because he's been whipped into submission by his wife? Is it because he's accepted life as a sub to his dummy mommy? No, it's because he realizes he can increase his wife's comfort at no real cost to himself. And even if there was, it wouldn't matter. The game might not say it, Heinrich might not admit it, but Gretchen truly has become his wife. In all seriousness, it is nice to see two characters that respect each other and fight for one another. It's never addressed why Heinrich wants to die, nor does he ever act like a man ready to die, but the game might not say it, Heimlich might not admit it, but I've accepted that he wants to keep living because of his cute wife. Oh right, the story, yeah, it's ass. There's honestly not much to say about the overall story. Unlike Folklore, the story in Knight's Contract is seemingly there to drive the giant witch fights, which are pretty cool, I'll admit, but there's not much else. It's not like Gretchen and Heimrich develop as characters. They start off sorta of friendly with each other and end the game still friendly with each other. Luckily, they are interesting to watch. Same goes for all the crazy shit that happens throughout the game. There's a lot of cutscenes that establish that the main villain is indeed not a good person. Also, the main villain is called Dr. Faust, and according to the story of Dr. Faust, uh, he takes advantage of Gretchen and impregnates her. Once Gretchen realizes that Faust pulled a uh, ram and scram, she proceeds to... Hmm. How should I put this? This little part of the story is more or less nowhere to be found in the game, but there's no way I wasn't going to mention it. Gameplay Knight's Contract is a full-on action game, offering a ranking system, combos, all that shit. Not quite a God of War clone either, which was the only genre of action game that existed back then. Instead, taken after hack and slash games, you control Heinrich, who weighs about 500 pounds. This is felt in gameplay whenever he hits something. He does so by putting all his strength into the attack, creating very gorilla-centric gameplay. Take a minute to look at his weapon. It's a scythe that also works as a hammer. It's the edgiest shit I've ever seen, but it's also cool as hell. He's tanky, every attack you do perfectly conveys it. But he's also fast as shit. Not really, he's probably using the momentum of his weapon. Either way, Heinrich can push out combos like crazy, wherein everything standing in his way is promptly thrown out of the map. He can also do shit like slamming an enemy into the air and then performing an air throw like he's in Guilty Gear. One thing I found weird is how you don't gradually unlock moves. Usually that's how it goes, but here, you start off with a small move list. A basic string, a string that turns into a heavy attack, some directional attacks wherein you move the thumbstick left and right. And these attacks feel damn awkward since you never really know if you did it right. So basically, this is all you have to work with until you defeat a boss. Then you get a bunch more moves that gives you stuff like the twirly heavy attack and the ability to jump. Alongside that, you have Gretchen that's doing magic attacks. While you're pulling out combos, you have to integrate her spells into the fight. Enemies moving around too much? Grab them with the bear trap attack. Enemies flying? Shoot them down with your magical lance. Each spell is used for something specific or to continue damage. Do them at the right time and you might get that sweet bonus damage. Spend all your points to upgrade spells. Around the 5th level, spell upgrades taper off due to the price some of them have. But if you unlock even one of the final upgrades, they'll uh, turn the game into easy mode. 
Likewise, Gretchen possesses an instant kill attack called Witch's Embrace that takes forever to charge up. And as the name implies, Gretchen uh, does that. Recently, I found out that if you do the Witch's Embrace with no enemies around, it just shows you Gretchen doing nude poses. I wasn't joking when I said this was a fetish game. You even get an achievement for it. Now that is a hallmark of a great game. Combat in this game is quite good. It's not overly complicated like other games, but it's still quite flashy and fast paced enough to be fun. Also, enemies do a lot of damage, so it's quite hard to just button mash until you win. Heinrich is immortal. As such, he cannot die. Gretchen, on the other hand, can. So naturally, she'll follow you into lava and get herself killed. What this effectively means is that no matter how much Heinrich gets hit, he won't die. He'll get incapacitated, sure. Blown to pieces as well. Maybe even get decapitated. To the average German, this is considered a minor injury. He'll always come back, granted you mash the X button until your finger hurts. The life bar belongs to Gretchen, so it's our job to protect the Queen via the Twitch moderator meeting. Ban all instances of the word simp. And to heal, you have to press the come here woman button, and she'll happily jump into your arms. As you may have guessed, if she dies, it's game over. But really, if Heinrich gets incapacitated, it's more or less a given that Gretchen is going to die. It's also very possible for Gretchen to fall off the map and cause a game over. Sometimes, she'll do this. That's why we have to keep her close. In truth, she's not the worst companion. She's kinda like Ashley, but useful. Some reviews say escorting Gretchen is the worst part of the game and call her mean things. In truth, Gretchen is quite capable and greatly enhances combat. And even if she wasn't, I would still escort her, as sacrifices are required for a healthy marriage. In short, combat is really fun. That satisfying weight to every attack as you throw enemies around pairing the knights by hitting them even harder. Pulling out combos and using Gretchen's magic during said combos is a pretty cool thing to do, but it's not perfect. Some enemies are really tedious to fight. For starters, the electric enemies that move around way faster than you and you can never really hit them. Or the white knights that deflect every attack you do. But despite those minor gripes, the overall fights are very good. Which is why it's so confusing that the game constantly pulls you out of the regular combat for some other bullshit. On the fourth level, it takes Gretchen away from you, leaving you with no magic. Or the game will put you in a confusing maze with no combat. Near the end of the game, they, they take my wife away. Why? You do realize she was the only reason I'm playing, right? Instead we get, ugh, I'm in a Kelsis. I don't like him. He's a short stubby man and most notably he's not Gretchen. I don't even want to carry him, he creeps me the fuck out. He has his own set of magical attacks, two of which include swinging his sword blind. He also throws bombs around, and the bombs he throws around have friendly fire. This dude can blow himself off the map and die. In short, he sucks. On the other hand, we also get to play as Gretchen, but much like my real wife, I, I don't want to be around her when I'm alone. Gretchen has like two attacks, plus half her magic. She doesn't really have a way to defend herself either, and her health runs out pretty quickly. Yeah, this also sucks. Incidentally, these couple of levels are where the developers stopped giving half a shit since they just recycled levels from before. I don't think they were very proud of these levels since they basically give both characters a temporary overpowered ability. Minakelsis can freeze enemies and one-shot them, and Gretchen can just spam this shitty little thing. What the fuck is that? It's like a raisin. But like, it's the only range attack she has, so fuck it, I'ma keep spamming it. Now, it's not like I was the biggest fan of the previous levels. To be honest, after the first stage and the hair castle, things just sort of turn into an uninspired mess. Like the ice level, it's just long stretches of snowy terrain. Except for the snake that Gretchen can sit on. But that's about it. It's snow and caves that all look very similar. I kept getting turned around inside the caves and exiting from the entrance I came through. Also, I forgot I had a map, so fuck me, I guess. The previous level I mentioned is basically some dream sequence or whatever. The introduction to this place overhypes itself. It tells us we're gonna go through the places in Heinrich's memories, and considering he's over 100 years old and the game never expands on what he did during those years, I thought this is where they were gonna do that. But nah, it's just the sewers we got out of like two hours ago. Which, I mean, they are his memories, so I did this to myself. But that aside, we get to the truly terrible parts of this game, the boss fights. So the bosses in this game employ the strategy of fly away so you can't hit them. An effective strategy, sure, but fuck you. Basically, they'll just fly around throwing attacks at you until they let their guard down, to which then you can proceed to whack them. Or they'll teleport halfway across the map and not have a clearly defined way of hitting them. The final boss is a particularly big bitch about this. You have to keep smacking his legs until he topples, then you can hurt him. He has the longest health bar out of everyone in the game, so this takes about 4 days to do. Some attacks will knock either you or Gretchen off the map and cause a game over. Sometimes the floor just doesn't exist. Heinrich. 
Pro tip for the Fire Witch, let her stab Gretchen. This does very little damage to Gretchen, but it also opens up the Fire Witch Lady for some free hits. While the bosses themselves are not very good, nothing is less good than the cutscenes that play afterwards. Once you achieve victory, there'll be QTEs you have to do. If you fail in reacting in the approximate one second that they give you, the game kills you. Not really though, Heinrich can't die, so the fight restarts with the boss at 30% health. Oh, but not in the final boss, no, if you mess up one of those QTEs, it makes you do the entire fight from the beginning. Not to mention, the final boss is really annoying. Restarting the entire fight because I missed an input? No, that's too much dicking me around, fuck you. This is the worst thing I've ever seen done in a video game. Why would you do this? It's the epitome of artificial difficulty. Did they really think anyone was going to go, Oh, well, that was fair, I just didn't predict what the game wanted from me. Come on, game, I just finished the stupid ass fight. Let me enjoy seeing the witches die in extremely violent ways. But no, I have to pay attention to the arbitrary button presses, lest I get too engaged with the story. Gretchen says they're her sisters, but I don't know, man, she seems fine doing this. I think the moment it clicked that this was a shit ass game was during the Fire Witch boss. I kept failing her QTE and getting sent back to when she was at 30%, to which then she would cause an explosion and knock Gretchen off the stage, triggering an instant game over, to which then I'd have to do the fight from the very start. So basically, do I think this game is good? Sure, why not? It's garbage, but it's fun garbage. Combat is great, I just wish the game would let me do the fights uninterrupted without some stupid gimmick. Game, just let me do combos with my cute wife. Though the boss fights make me inclined not to recommend the game, since I can't say I ever really had fun with one except the first fight. Mostly because the first witch it looks cool as hell, but I digress. It's good garbage that apparently went for a AAA price when it first released. Can you imagine paying $60 for this? I can, I, I, I paid $60 for this. Anyways, I'm done with this shit. Like and subscribe. More videos coming soon. I'm out. See ya. Yo, Heinrich is dripped it's up, dude. Dripped what the hell? What the fuck?